am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-hosts Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, and Dave Dreyer and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Uh, with me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, 91 of them straight. We did it. Yes. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome, right? Wait a minute. Were we supposed to be straight when we did these? Um... Wait, what? What? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh. That's, that's good to be here, oh. Doc. Yes, yes. I mean, given that we started out doing four of them that, you know, we're, we're approaching yeah, 100, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think we've done over uh, over 200 films, right? I would say that's true. We did like 130, I think, in the first year or something in that. That's insane. This is like, we're, insane. we're crazy, but we're crazy because our fans need us to be crazy. So you can kind of, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with that. All right. Also joining us is Crystal Cleveland, the living dead girl. Crystal, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? I'm getting, I'm ready for the holidays already. I know we're still like, uh, uh, a okay, couple weeks so away. All, all the people in the States know what holiday you're talking about. Oh, my bad. Right? Yeah. We, oh yeah. Sorry. Like Nick and all those. Yeah. No. Um. Thanksgiving. Sorry. Thanksgiving. But I mean, I'm really, I'm really more. Probably more excited about Christmas. You know? Are you? Are you? Yeah, Christmas is fun. Christmas. I mean, yeah. you get gifts, isn't that? Okay. Isn't that what life's all about? <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I'm it's kidding. not what you give; it's what you get. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like this. It's like it's like no. So, so we used to always say, "Okay, this is so bad." In the church, we were like, "God bless you as you give, and only as you give." Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty. Do you get it? Like, get it? If you don't give, it's really yep. a shitty saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's re- it was really shitty of us. We're horrible people. No, but <clears throat> yeah. I'm just gonna shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. All right, rounding out the crew is my buddy over at H and R, Dave Dreyer. Dave, how you doing? What the hell did I just listen to? <laughs> <laughs> i'm very confused the babblecast welcome to the babblecast uh, hello everybody you're not holding up your end dave <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, got, we got plenty of time we got at least an hour to talk oh we got yes we'll, we'll he'll sink before he swims all right this is uh we're going to review a pair of horror movies streaming on uh, video on demand out there somewhere we'll talk about where they are here in a minute but the movies we're going to talk about are red letter day which is coming on blu-ray november 5th and the Nightingale, which is playing on Hulu. Uh, we'll get into the meat of what each of those may be here shortly. But first, I uh, just want to talk to you about our sponsor. Yes, <laughs> the show is brought to you by uh, Express VPN. Uh, VPN is a virtual private network, which is a secure tunnel between your device and the Internet. VPNs are used to keep your stuff private. No snooping, interference, and censorship. Protect your online traffic and protect your identity. If you are doing stuff on the internet, and if you're listening to this, you likely are, this is something you want to consider. This particular one, ExpressVPN, has rock solid uh, privacy at blazing speed, no compromises, they say. Accelerates your VPN. They have 160 servers across 94 countries, which is a good thing. No restrictions. And they keep you anonymous. And here's the biggie for me. Everything's encrypted. It's not dependent on HTTPS. Everything you do is encrypted. And that helps keep everything you do private. And, of course, they have great support 24-7. Dave, I know you you purchased ExpressVPN. I did. I am running it on every damn thing I have. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's working good. I, I've had no uh, no issues. It's installed very easily on all my machines. And I, you know, across, I've got Android, I've got iOS, I've got Windows 10, and I've got it all. And uh, yeah, it, it's working good. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Yeah, you can put it, you can put it on as many things as you need to, but you can only run five simultaneously. Correct. Yeah. So that's something yeah. to keep in mind. It, it, it but that's still a lot. I mean, yeah. I mean, seriously, how is one person going to be on five things at any one time anyway? So uh, if you had a yeah. large family, <laughs> yeah, 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 and you can even put it, you can put it on your Roku. You can put it, I mean, you can put this thing on everything. 
Yeah. I, I noticed that my Fire Stick has the uh, ExpressVPN app. Yep. Mm, All right. Yep. So check it out at uh, tryexpressvpn.com slash gruesome magazine. Yes. And get your uh, get your three months free when you purchase a year. It's kind of awesome. Good deal. That's a good deal. Kind yeah, it is awesome. Indeed. So we want to thank ExpressVPN for turning our lights on. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. They're keeping right. us safe. They are. <laughs> and, uh, the first movie up tonight is Red Letter Day. This is from director Cameron McGowan. And the cast includes Don Van de Schoot. <laughs> I, I, can I say that name again? That's an awesome name. Don Van de Schoot. Or is it Scoot? Not- Shoot. No, I think I think shoot. I think shoot. shoot. It could be shoot. It could be scoot. It's kind of like skew. Scoot. <laughs> Haley Foss. Caleb Sane Gartner. Why did I do that? And it, <laughs> the uh, synopsis goes as follows. While adjusting to a new life in a quiet suburban community, a recently divorced mother and her two teens receive mysterious red letters instructing them to kill or be killed. Kind of a good premise, but let's find out. Purge. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Something in my throat. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're Purge. Right, you're right, you're right, right. Let's find out what the crew think. Uh, starting off with Crystal Cleveland, what is your first impression of Red Letter Day? Okay, so I knew nothing about this film, but just based on the very beginning of the film, for some reason it made me think that this that was about to happen was just a community thing, you know, where the, since it was a new housing community where they had just moved into. So I thought it was going to be contained to that area when I first uh, started watching this. And I was like, Oh, well, okay. This seems interesting. I mean, the opening scene is a little frantic and I think it kind of pulls you in and then you slowly unravel this sort of, Semi sort of mystery to what is happening and what's going on. I'm trying to definitely not give too much away. And I'll say the movie overall is okay. I mean, I I didn't hate it. I, I wasn't like bored at any part of the movie. I did, however, find it very frustrating at times with the, with a couple of the choices that particularly the mother made. I mean, I mean, a teenager always makes silly decisions. It wasn't funny enough to be campy, but it wasn't realistic enough for me to take it seriously either. So being in that middle ground is kind of a tough place to be, you know? It was shot well. There weren't any super crazy weird edits. The sound was good. I think the quality was good overall. I guess I just more so question the choices of the characters and why they're doing what they're doing and why everyone decided to take this so seriously. I mean, I I try to think of it conceptually as like, what if this really happened? How would people react? Would this be even close to real life? And I could see some people buying into this and I could, absolutely see some people wanting this to happen there were definitely some people who promoted this and wanted this and of course they're going to participate in in what this thing what's happening here basically you know every you know the letter you receive has the person of the a photo of the person that you're supposed to kill and their address and then they receive the same letter about you there are no consequences mind you to not killing them at all Which, to me, would say, why would you even participate in this? I don't know. Why would you take this serious? I mean, I do know that there's a lot of unbalanced people. And unfortunately, like I said, I could see this happening somewhat. But I I would definitely just bar myself in my home and not leave. the, The mom decides, however, it's a good idea to go and visit the person that she's supposed to kill because it's her friend. I just think, oh, just damn dumb. It's just silly. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, that's a silly thing to do. And to leave your two children 
admittedly they're teenagers, but to leave them at home when something crazy like this happens, something weird like this, I just think it's strange. And then she even further makes a silly choice trying to go find a child that left the house. And at one point she's going, she was, she was even considering leaving her child with what looked like to me to be a crazy church lady who I would never, I mean, I, and oh, okay, but wait, furthermore, she didn't happen to notice that it was right. They were right in front of her best of her friend's home. Like, it's just, it wasn't that strange. It wasn't that silly. Like that was just silly guys. Come on. So yeah. So, so there's a lot of problems with it. I think the writing could have used some fine tuning. And that's my first thoughts. Yeah, that's your first thoughts. That's that's mm. a that's a lot. That's a lot. All right, I'm cool. Sorry, yeah, no, no, no it's, great. Like, it's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's find out what Dave Dreyer thought, sir. What is your first impression of Red Letter Day? What she said. No, really. Yeah, I said, yeah. <laughs> it really had a very much a high end, low budget feel to it. You can kind of tell they had fun making this, but the movie didn't make a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, I was choking on a little purge there earlier. I definitely had purge vibes going through it. You know, the old what what if the structure as we know it ceased to exist? What would happen? You know, could you defend yourself? Could you survive? The opening scene I really didn't get. Why was that guy running around trying to collect all the envelopes? Was he trying to stop it from happening? I think that's what it, what his plan was. Yeah. I think, yeah, because yeah, it just, made no sense. I'm like, okay, is he <laughs> putting them in? Is he taking them out? Is he what's he doing with it? You know, and then he gets kind of slaughtered there on the doorstep, and then they pour tomato juice down the steps, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, it was it was okay. It was okay. I don't know much about the the filmmakers and the people involved in this, so I don't want to piss on them too much. You, you can tell they had a lot of fun doing this. It kind of remember uh, reminded me of like the Dead Next Door or something like that. You know, some kids sitting in the basement going, "You know what? We should make a movie," and <laughs> and out they went and they made one. But it's for me nothing special and not really worthy of a whole lot of discussion. No, well that that's that's pretty bold there. <laughs> All right, well uh, Jeff, sir, what is your first impression of Red Letter Day? What they said? Oh, <laughs> now stop! <laughs> uh, well, so yeah, I I uh, I thought it was an interesting concept, you know, purge like or not, to see the different ways that people would act in a uh, quote unquote civilized society <laughs> under those circumstances. Uh, and I thought the first scene kind of pulled me in and got me paying attention and wondering what was going on. But then we get like. A half an hour of what to me was like mundane boring dialogue of everyday life and it's it was mundane and boring <laughs> Just... <laughs> honestly though honestly that was one of the better parts of the movie oh. Oh. <laughs> See, it seemed really realistic but i was like come on come on come on do something you know and and i and i imagine they're trying to develop the characters and relationships in that family but i it it wasn't working for me anyway. And it just that it just kind of felt flat. I didn't really care about the characters, so didn't really get too excited when something was happening. I dug some of the practical effects I thought were kind of cool. Especially good old Luther. That was interesting. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. How could you forget that? That was Ow. yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a nice one. And it ended pretty predictably. You know, really? But, okay, oh. so uh, uh, here's where I have to disagree. I was proud of what she did. Like, oh, I don't mean she. I mean the final scene when they uh, you oh, see okay. the mail truck. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, sure, sure, sure. Yes. Which is also unrealistic, though, because let's be real. They would make sure that those would never get delivered. Whoever the they we have way too many cameras. We have too much CCTV for this stuff to happen worldwide. I mean, like at a point, it's just absolutely ridiculous in red envelopes because we're not going to notice <laughs> yeah. so, sorry sorry, sorry. They'd, be, they'd be text now anyway Ooh. <laughs> yeah. now that's interesting all right well i'll give my first impression uh, sounds like a good time I, I i like what jeff said when he said it was flat and that's how it felt for me i like the setup and i actually 
like Crystal said, I got to like the characters. I thought their dynamic was established really well, although it's flat. <laughs> like Jeff <laughs> said, you know, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I get it. This is a normal. I'm like, ah. But it's, uh, it works and you get to know them. Now, the problem I had, and maybe we touched on this as we went along, was I, I, I didn't get the motivation or the consequence, right? Because it seemed like since the police weren't responding, it was going to be a free for all. So there wasn't any consequence and there wasn't any motivation. Like if they decided to do something else, you know, what was going to happen, right? Nothing. And the only reason, I mean, that's, it, yeah, it would have been, it, it would have had a little more suspense, a little more oomph, a little more urgency, which is, I think without the urgency is why it's flat. If, if they, if like, you know, somebody was, I don't know, just thinking off the top of my head, thinking out loud that, you know, held hostage, right? Hey, if you don't do this, you know, this person will but, get. But, blah, with, right? but with it to be so widespread, that's. A, it's a little hard, that, right? That, that, there, yeah. No, it's impossible. I right. mean, you would need millions of people in a big city like Dallas to k- kidnap people. To be able and to not, hold them and, hostage. Right, to right. Make this. That wouldn't work. So, yeah, yeah, there's no way. Yeah. So it would, they would have to, I mean, but they needed, and I guess that's the, that was the challenge, you know. But without that motivation, the actions are all questionable. One of the things I'll say that I liked was even though her, the mom's going over to her friend's house seemed kind of odd to do, I thought they handled the escalation of that particular encounter in a way that made sense, you know, because, you know, they are nervous because, hey, the person that's supposed to come kill me just showed up, but we trust them. They're our friends. And when the, you know, when they discover something in her purse that, you know, puts that in question, jumping to conclusions isn't too far, isn't too hard to believe. So I, it, it may have went kind of goofy and silly. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, let's be honest. The husband is insane. He's crazy. Like he has, yeah. he has no reason to react the way that he does to the friend when she comes. No, it's to me that whole scene was ridiculous. And how dare that fucking bitch get upset? Gets upset when she stabs when that when she stabs her husband to defend herself, and then the friend gets upset. I'd be like, Nah, he deserved it. You're right because I would be taming my husband if he were reacting that way to my friend. Why are you acting crazy? Why are you acting like she's a threat? No, it's just a matter of no one being in control here. I guess that's what bothers me about the movie is it's like, okay, I'm going to make the stupidest decisions possible and only make it worse because that's. I I go back to your first statement about the mother going down there, because if they were good friends, longtime friends, she'd know that the husband was a dick. Yeah, I mean, look at him. Well, they did talk about yeah. that. So why go into the lion's den? What? No, why was he even there? Here's the reality. She did. She because the script said so. Well, there yeah, you go. She didn't need to go visit her. That's that's what I'm saying. Her husband's there. She doesn't need you. You talk to her on the phone. It's all good. Guess who does need you? Your kid. Your kid. Well, wouldn't it wouldn't it have been more interesting as so the annoying. person that was after him showed up? Yes. Oh, I would right? love that. Right. I would have loved to see that dude die. I would have been very happy about that because he's a. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I'm doing. But I, yeah, but it makes me it, this this film makes me do what I hate doing, and that's trying to write a better. Right. Right. <laughs> And I don't, I, Cameron, I apologize. I, that's not what I intend to do. But I think, Crystal, you said you were a little frustrated. And that's is, it. It's because it was like so close, right? You're so close. Even with some of the decisions, you're just so close. But yet, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, and for me, it was all it was all about the motivation and the conflict. You know, it just wasn't, the, the suspense wasn't held. So it was just actions going through and you know, fell a little flat. Now, when it did pull in the, the effects, like Jeff said, there's a bone break in the leg. That's pretty effective. And the jaw thing is pretty effective. Now, Dave, is is that what you, because you said it felt like the higher end of a low budget. Is is it the effects? <laughs> yeah. Is, is the yeah, effects yeah, part yeah. of it or was yeah, it the... Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely the effects are a are, are major part of it. You could tell that, uh, excuse me, that's where they spent their money for sure. Because they didn't spend it on a writer. Oh, 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 no. oh Cameron! Whoa. Sorry, Cameron! No. Sorry, Cameron! But <laughs> I mean, but uh, effects alone, and, and we all know this. Effects alone cannot save a film. It just can't. 
We're kind of past that. Maybe back in the 70s, it could. You know, you'd sit through a stinker just for a really great effect. But uh, it, you know, that the, 80s too. That's true. Yeah, those, those days are gone. So, um, yeah, it, it definitely suffers from the weaknesses and the, and the strengths that it does have aren't enough to save it, unfortunately. But I'm, you know, I'm with you. I think uh, there could have been just simple changes that would have made this movie way better. Like, really, like, because I, I think it, I think it would have, it would have made this okay movie really good. Like, I mean, the mom not leaving, she, she really didn't need to leave. There's so many other ways they could have written it and so many things they could have done. Like you said, having the people come to them. I mean, we did see one of those happen and that makes sense. That guy seemed like a crazy. And I totally think that some people would do that. I could buy that. And I admire the teenager's choice of a meat tenderizer as a weapon. That yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Until you realize it was, uh, <laughs> it, it might not have been big enough compared to the <laughs> measure up to a sledgehammer. Yeah. Sledgehammer, yeah, yeah. Not too many homes have that. that that's a that's a professional quality meat tenderizer. You know, yeah, there you go. Just have those little baby ones. That that was a that was a real deal one there. Yeah, well, he he did end up getting the best of that too. So eventually. Well, but you know what upset me about that is the only thing that I thought of this whole entire time was. That sweet kid, his he's getting fucked over because of his mom. Yeah, she's a yeah. dumb twat. She's a dumb fucking twat. I would die for my kid. I would absolutely take a bullet for them. And she's out gallivanting around like a dumb bitch. I, I, <laughs> I that's unacceptable to me. No, I'll tell you this. I'm not, sure where, like Crystal, I'm not sure where Crystal stands on this. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. It's a little great. You, know, you, know <laughs> you know, it's like, look, I am all cool and all well and all good until you mess with the babies. And I know he's a teenager, but he's always going to be a baby to that mama. Okay. And that is the thing. It's like, I'm a super protective mother. And it's like, I just can't understand being any other way. Yeah. And, and that was the one guy. That everybody wasn't his guy, the guy where they all went, Oh, that's that oh, weird yeah. guy that walks his cat. They all knew he was weird, you know. Yeah. So let's leave him home alone with his sister who's hiding upstairs, I guess. She she ends up leaving all the don't know that. Yeah, he sends her upstairs, I think, doesn't he? And and you know what? I can I can absolutely buy her sneaking out to go try to be with her boyfriend. Because she's a dumb teenager and she thinks the whole thing's stupid, and so she's just gonna go be with her boyfriend. Actually, that I buy. So, see, they could have gone from that to, from you know, from what happened with the crazy man to trying to find the daughter together. I mean, you know, there's other ways. That that whole thing with Alice and her stupid husband. I don't know. <laughs> it was fluff. Fluff. All right. Um, I yeah, I think we've made our in, uh, impression of this one pretty clear. So let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, and favorite scene. Crystal, you're first. I think you pretty much have done this, but <laughs> keep it quick and uh, let's let's go through it. Okay. So, like I said, it was okay. I mean, I know I said a lot of negative stuff, but I think I only said negative stuff because just when you're right on the precipice of something good, it's more frustrating. You know, so I will give this a 2.75. Okay. Pretty good. Same. Yeah. And I'm going to say my favorite scene is, uh, you know, I, I want to take the, uh, the, the mom scene at the end. I'm going to let y'all have that. And it's a random one, but I'm going to take the Buffalo, Buffalo Bill type dude. There's a montage video where people are like wearing those masks and stuff and this dude cuts off his shirt and he puts on a ma uh, on a mask and he's super creepy like the buffalo bill signs with lambs i don't know if you even noticed him mm. it's such a quick thing but it just i was like that's pretty good right there so there's <laughs> thing, yeah so that's what i'm gonna take yep i dig me totally <laughs> 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 hey, the way he cuts off his shirt i'm like oh <laughs> all right dave Dreher, sir oh i can't wait to hear this what's your final thoughts <laughs> your score and favorite scene well doc you know i gotta go there red letter day is return to sender <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah oh, you know I didn't even, I didn't yeah even coming. Yeah, yeah crystal's right i mean it's okay i'm giving this one a 2.25 kudos for the folks to, for getting it made i always feel bad when you know you can tell they they tried 
Yeah, there, there's just not much to this. It, it, it's an amalgam of a bunch of stuff we've already seen uh, a thousand times before, and it's not done particularly well. So, again, if it's on something you already pay for, check it out. What, what's this one on? What's uh, what's Red Letter Day on? It, it's on a, v, a VOD and Blu-ray right now, so it's not streaming. Wait for it to come to Shutter or Hulu or one of those. You know, you're already paying for it anyway. Uh, favorite scene, uh, but really the only scene that even piqued my interest a little bit was actually the uh, meat tenderizer scene that whole piece i thought was actually pretty good with the catwalker with the cat yeah with the catwalker yeah i enjoyed the catwalker and just the the structure of that whole that whole scene no one part of it was really any better than the other but there was actually like some tension and a little fear and you know i I kind of perked up a little bit and was like "Ooh, ooh, we might be onto something here and then no we weren't so (laughs) <laughs> mm, okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. Jeff Moore, sir, what is your final thought score or favorite scene? Red Letter Day? I would go along with what Dave and Crystal said. It's it's an okay thing to watch. I, I You know, I kind of like the mother uh, in terms of the acting, uh, not necessarily the decisions, as Crystal pointed out, but <laughs> I kind of liked her, and I'm going to give this a uh, 2.0. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. I'm going to say my favorite scene was when mom makes sure the catwalker's dead. <laughs> I like, okay. Uh, not, wow. not exactly a scientific method. But. Two points here, just 2.0, just two, just a flat two. Hardcore, um, man. I, that's less than Dave. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. All right, I'm going to give it a 2.5. So we're all right in the same range. I uh, was the highest. You I were. You liked that. it the best. <laughs> and I, I, again, I think it's, like you said, well made. It, the production values are strong from the acting to the cinematography, even though it, you know, it, it's, it's made, it's, the cinematography decisions are made to feel like it's a suburban neighborhood. So it's, it's lit like that, which is fine because I think that was the point. It, it's a little tonally weird. You know, it, it wants to be funny, but then it isn't. It wants to be serious, but it isn't, you know, cause the cat guy is, Hilarious, <laughs> yeah. but, but right? I want to. Right, right, but yet <laughs> nobody else really is. And then you know, so it. I, I wasn't. I was never really sure whether to take it to be funny or serious or campy or like you were saying at the very beginning. I just I didn't know. But flat, yeah, two point five, straight up the middle. You want to see it for the the jaw breaking? I'm pretty sure that's pretty. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, favorite scene though is not that. My favorite scene. After, again, we, I think we're all kind of in the same range. After uh, Catwalker gets slaughtered, Mom goes upstairs to find the daughter. And she looks in the mirror, and, and she is literally covered in blood. Oh, and yeah. I just, I just liked her reaction. I just, uh-huh. I, I, you know, the acting on that, you know, it was, it was like a, a semi-double take and then pause and then, oh, crap, look, at, look what's happened. And it, it just felt earned and honest and i i kind of dug it and plus it was you know she was pretty gruesomely red (laughs) all right there it is red letter day available november 5th so as we're recording it is available out and it's out now vod and blu-ray so check it out if you'd like to support gruesome magazine there's the best way to do so spread the word share the podcast tell your friends review it on itunes let other people know about this so they can all join in and uh hear our thoughts and share our thoughts and hopefully give us some feedback about the films that are streaming out there. Another way to do that is to share some dough <laughs> so we can keep the lights on. Uh, you can do that through Patreon. Uh, you can go to horrornewsradio.com slash Patreon and, and, and check that out. Uh, we want to thank our newest patron, Vince Veronoldi. Did I do that right? I felt like I did that right. A little Pretty slow. Pretty Pretty close. Close. But, right. uh, but Vince, thank you so much for joining the crew. Thank uh, you, Vince. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Benny the man. Uh, if you like t-shirts, you can go to horrornewsradio.com slash tees, and there's a number of t-shirts there as well. There's a Gruesome Magazine t-shirt. They're awesome. Yeah, you want one. Yes, definitely. Put that eyeball on your chest. You can. Well, yes. there's, that, there's that too. <laughs> All right. Our second film is The Nightingale. Now, this is the second film from Jennifer Kent, who did uh, what film, Jeff Moore? The Babadook. The Babadook. 
and Australian director, and this is also set in Australia. It's uh, set in 1825. Claire, a young Irish convict woman, chases British officers through the rugged uh, Tasmanian wilderness, bent on revenge for a terrible act of violence committed against her and her family. I won't say any more of what it is. Well, except that she has an Aboriginal tracker named Billy that helps her. I'll say that. The cast includes Aisling Franciosi, Sam Cleflin, and Bekele Ganabar. <laughs> We're going to go with that. Ganabar. Ganabar. Uh, oh, I, I can't pronounce any. Uh, it is currently available on Hulu. And, of course, it got a lot of kind of buzz as it was going through uh, film festivals and uh, approaching. Uh, we didn't really get a good release in the theaters, but now it's available on Hulu, so we're here to talk about it. And Jeff, we all know this one is up your alley. This this is kind of like a no-brainer for you. So let's find out, Jeff. What was your first impression of The Nightingale? So I'm expecting the the range of these scores to be a lot larger than the last one. <laughs> I bet. Based on comments I've heard, but I I absolutely love this movie. And I like almost everything about it. I think it was very well written. There's, you know, from my point of view, nuanced characters that have an arc, especially Claire and Billy, have definite arcs to how they behave, how they think, and what drives them. We always know what their motivations are. Uh, One of the things that I think is really interesting is that, as Doc said, it takes place in uh, 1825 Tasmania. And I looked that up a little bit. And the, it was the, the situa- prison colony, wasn't it? Yeah, Australia yeah. yeah. The stuff that's depicted there is fairly accurate as far as what's going on. And there was actually a war that kind of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it an informal war, called the Black War that is generally considered to have kicked off in 1825 which was between the British and the uh, Aborigines that were there before. Jeff, that's what they refer to as civilizing the dang country. That's well, that's, yeah, that's what the, the lieutenant did. Ugh, it's disgusting. It's yeah. disgusting. So there's, yeah, so, and it was started in like, uh, I think the first uh, penal colony was like in 1803 or 1804. So with that, you know, looking at that, and as I usually do on a movie like this, I watched it a couple of times and I, you know, it's it's not short. It's two hours and 15 minutes, but I, I was with it the whole way both times. I just enjoyed the hell out of it. You have this setup where the British officer, and I'm just going to call him the lieutenant, that he's billed as Hawkins, but I never, I'm not sure if I ever heard anybody say Hawkins. Uh, they just called him the lieutenant. And he has, Claire is a, an Irish convict that he apparently purchased her from the prison and then the idea is that at some point you're gonna let her loose only that time has passed three months ago and he still won't let her loose and this is all stuff you find out in like the first 10 minutes so i don't i don't think i'm giving it away so he uh forces her to uh submit to rape and still refuses to set her free and in the meantime she's gotten married and has a baby her husband's getting impatient etc and then you also have uh, the aboriginals uh, that are in conflict with the, the settlers and the British soldiers. So I, I just love the whole thing. And, and it kind of, after the first 25, 30, I guess it's about 30 minutes, then it turns into sort of a uh, revenge cycle. But it's, you know, when it gets to the end, I just don't think that we're, we're not really sure if anybody wins. We know a couple people lose, but uh, <laughs> they there's, we're not really sure if the other ones win. I enjoyed the hell of it. I thought it was good acting, beautiful cinematography. I love the closing shot. It was beautiful, and there's lots of shots like that. And I love historical stuff like this because I felt like uh, she went to a lot of effort to – make everything as historical as possible, the way they lived, the the way people were treated. And then we also saw two sides of everything. As poorly supported as it was for the lieutenant, he he was just a, a bad person. But we might have seen more than two sides. I'm I was thinking there was if Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there, there was a lot of different points of view that eventually now only two sides got 
most of the screen time, but we've got some other points of view in there that I found fascinating, but we'll get to that. I, I want to, before we get to Dave and what he thought, I want to talk about two actors real quick, Jeff, with you in mind. Sure. One was Charlie Shotwell, who plays little Eddie. Yeah, his, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was Eli in a film that we... Yes, he was. And I was like, I know that face. Where did I see him? The other one, I think both Dave and Jeff, you guys will know this, is uh, Damon Harriman, who plays Roos. Yes. That's the, this guy, I was like, I know that face. I know that face. Oh, he yeah. played Charles Manson in Mindhunter and Charles Manson in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And? Yes, and... Dewey Crow on Justified. Well, there you go. Yes. <laughs> Which was one of my favorite shows at the time. But he is, I thought he was amazing in this, but I'll get to my rest of my points here in just a little bit. But I just wanted to talk about that while yep, I had yep. you. Dave Dreher, uh, this again is going to be interesting. What was your first impression <laughs> of The Nightingale? Unlike Red Letter Day, this was a beautifully put together movie. I mean, this movie looked great. I have to agree with Jeff. The the amount of detail to make this look so bleak and just heartbreaking was amazing. With that being said, this is way too long of a movie for the love of God. <laughs> it just went on forever. It was 35 minutes of despair followed by like maybe five or 10 minutes of action or violence, extreme violence, like horrifying. Violence. This is not a horror movie, although horrifying things happen. It's by no means is it a, is it a horror movie. There's no supernatural monsters or, or anything like that. This is just humans treating each other incredibly horribly. And uh, it's it was depressing as hell. I mean, it really, truly was. Uh, it just was, I didn't know if I wanted to slip my wrist from the length or just from being so damn depressed after, uh, after I watched it, uh, nothing really good comes out of this at all. Well, maybe I, the bond between her and the Aborigine maybe can be considered a good thing, but yeah, it's just depressing. It's a depressing movie, although it's beautifully, beautifully put together. She's a very talented director, incredibly talented. So it's more about the con. This just isn't your type of, yeah, it was just, uh, I, I think I referred to it as uh, Last House on the Left on the Prairie. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It's this woman who is brutalized and her family is brutalized and she has to, she has to, you know, bear the weight of loss that is just unbelievable. And she just kind of loses her mind and, and goes and kills everybody. I mean, that's now, basically, that's basically the just of what happens. Yeah, I would say the closest. I mean, other than the actions that are horrific that make this kind of you know in in the in the revenge subgenre of horror that's kind of on the fringes. I mean, she is haunted by the actions, and there are some of those nightmare scenes. Yeah, we see the the husband kind of return in uh, what a dream, or, uh, yeah. you know. Well, and she freezes several times when she comes face to face with her uh, uh, yes. the lieutenant. The guy who yeah, it was just horrible. I mean, uh, you know, and again, I know we don't want to get into spoilers yet, but the 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 uh, the second rape scene with the uh, with the baby and the husband in the room is just it's it's horrifying. damn. It's, it's really horrifying. it's actually hard to watch. I mean, I actually kind of had to look away because it's just uh, it's uh, it's too real of a depiction of what that would potentially be like. See, that's so interesting because honest. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, no, I'll get to that when I get to mine. Actually, I, my, my thoughts are done. So, uh, Well, I do have one more question for Dave before I get to you, Crystal, because I want to know, we know that you do not like to read your movies. <laughs> you do not like subtitles. But sometimes when a movie is really good, the subtitles don't stop you from liking it. Now, this movie right. bounces in and out. Yeah. So my question to you yeah. is, does the mix make it even more of a problem? No, it actually, it actually doesn't. And you know, it's odd because there are things going on in my personal life where I'm finding myself, uh, my wife has a hearing impairment. So uh, she's kind of progressed in the point of her thing that uh, she's having to use subtitles to be able to follow along with a show. So we actually watch subtitles on TV pretty much 24 seven now. So I've just kind of become used to them now. You've so, adapted. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just, I'm, I'm adapting. So, uh, you know, they honestly, I d didn't even think about them this particular uh, time around. Wow, growth. All right, cool, Dave. All right, uh, Crystal Cleveland, what is your first impression of The Nightingale? 
<sighs> I've got so many thoughts on this oh, movie. So oh, so many thoughts. Oh, God. Oh, Positive, God. negative? <laughs> what are these thoughts? I just find it absolutely fascinating that everyone seems to think that the real atrocity is this spoiled little brat instead of the Arab Aborigines, which is the real tragedy here. Like, like that's all, that's really all I felt for. That's all that mattered to me. She is a prisoner. I know what happened to her is absolutely horrific. Obviously, it's way beyond anything. But the way she reacts to everything that happens to her, she's, she's mean toward the woman that gives her her jobs. She's a prisoner. A prisoner. She was supposed to be in jail for three years, but instead she's out and she's been able to go and get married and have a child and actually have some life. She even said, oh, my God, I don't want to go back to the, to the prison. You know, I'm just like, I, yes, she should have her freedom. I'm not saying that she shouldn't. But I think she's very she acts like an entitled brat, not someone who said she was raised on the streets. She said she was raised on the streets as a child. You think she would have much better freaking skills at dealing with people. Like, instead, she's mean toward the lady. The lady would have been much kinder to her if she had been kinder to her. Instead, she just, eh, eh, eh. I just, I found that to be completely unbelievable. Completely unbelievable as a character. I'm not saying that it's not cool that she went through a character arc. I think that's great. I think it's wonderful. I'm happy to see that. But when she first meets up with Billy, she pays him to lead her around, and yet she treats him like a slave, just like she was treated, and puts a gun to him. I, I was disgusted by her. I, 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 ugh, just, ugh. Did y'all not feel that way toward her at all? Did y'all not see that she's just a little brat? I mean, it's shocking. Like, it's shocking the way she treats Not Billy. at all. Not at all. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. Like, the poor Aborigine that he ripped away from her child and, and, and took and, and took into the, their freaking camp and raped and murdered had it far worse than she ever did. I, no, I doesn't <laughs> – not taken away from that at all. I, I, mean, I can think she's Billy not sits, a brat and still Billy feel for at, Billy. When – uh, uh, wait, no, wait. she's talking about the other, the one that uh, the female that was walking with. Yeah, uh, it's like she was innocent. This girl is in the situation that she's in because she was a prisoner. I'm not saying, like I said, no, what, what happened to her it was not deserved. We don't know why she stole whatever it was that she stole. It's irrelevant. And that's why it's not mentioned. It's just meant to be a point. I think they intentionally made her a little bit of a spoiled brat. So she had more of an art. I, I don't. I don't see how you could say spoiled brat. Uh, she was entitled. Spoiled, spoiled means you. Well, she's not entitled. <laughs> well, yes, she, she, was. She, she she felt she's not entitled she to was. anything. Yes, she but was. she felt that way. She felt yes, that way. Yes, she did. If you can't, because she it, felt she had already, was... she felt she had already earned her papers. Well, the the whole thing for the way she was acting is because she felt she had already earned her papers, and and this guy, this lieutenant, was was refusing to give her papers for like three right. months. Right. So I mean, I felt. I felt that was driving what you're talking about. And that's why she was, you know, so angry with everybody. I mean, she has issues. Well, as far as but... the woman, that's her boss. I mean, her woman and her boss make some crack. She's coming back from being raped. No, no, no. The woman doesn't need to be watching her child. That's what I'm saying. The woman was watching her child. She did... So she should take her child in there while she's being raped. Maybe, uh, maybe she shouldn't have had a child. She's a prisoner. Do you not see where I'm coming? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, like he even said, I let you marry him. She is a prisoner. She has no life. I'm not saying that these are the times that we're living in. I'm saying if you look at it from a perspective of living and being in those times, the Irish were basically considered black especially irish catholics yeah. you know that doesn't mean so, she's going to be so, sympathetic with billy though no no that's not what i'm saying but she knows that that is how she's thought of but she doesn't seem to see it i feel like it's written i don't think it's written from that from that aspect i don't think it's written that it shows that she really feels that billy he knows he knows what's going on he knows what's happening and he acts accordingly like, he knows when to see trouble. He knows when to stay out of the way. 
and he doesn't put himself in in any sort of extra danger. When he decides to go and do what he does, he knows the choice he's making. She just seems to it's it's fascinating. If she were raised on the streets, really and truly, she would have much better skills at understanding and manipulating situations because that's the only way she would have survived. For well, if she was any good at it, she probably wouldn't have gotten caught. That too. <laughs> but, she, but, but she said that she, she said she lived there for years. Yeah. She's like, I was, I was on the streets for years. Years. Yeah. Cause her parents were taken from her earlier. That, that, she has a lot in common with, with Billy. And I think that was, you know, it just took a while for her to see that. Uh, but I, real quick, I want to give my first impressions because um, <laughs> I, I was a little worried <laughs> about this. I, I, I think I was the last one of the group to watch it. And I'd already heard everybody's and I was like, Oh God, what have I gotten myself into? Uh, and then it was the damn ratio. I, I you know, the uh, lighthouse did this too, and uh, I just, I just want widescreen. Oh, I know. Wait, what was that? Yeah, that was super weird. Is yeah. it? A, was it a box? I was it, like, Wait, it's, what it's the old four three ratio, but it's actually one thirty seven. But whatever. It's uh, it's more like it's classic style. I I feel like she chose that to help give it the past feeling, right? So it, it kept it from being grand in scope and brought it in. I mean, I, I, I see oh, the reason why okay. she, she chose it because it makes it more intimate, but I, it just frustrates me, but I got over that. So yay. And I really found myself drawn into the acting for these characters, especially when it got to the point when all our characters, cause there's a good many characters here that we're following primarily we're following claire and billy but uh, hawkins uh, you know he he has his motivation and we understand his motivation he's not a good guy but we know his motivation weird but his buddies ruse and jago his his subservient uh underlings their motivations are interesting too and they're really good and then when eddie shows up i thought that made some interesting things and then of course there's the connection that Billy has with um, Charlie, right? Is that the little boy? No, uh, Eddie's the little boy. Charlie okay. is the uh, other guide, the other aborigine. Oh, yeah. That knows what he's doing, and they weren't blood relatives, but he basically felt he was his uncle. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, Billy, that is, felt he was his uh, So I really got into how these characters evolved, um, and it wasn't – forced you know it it took a while you know she wasn't receptive to billy for a good long time i think her character is flawed like you're you're saying not maybe not quite as flawed as you're going to crystal but I, yeah she is a flawed character but i thought that was the point and understanding you know because she's no less racist if i can say that than than Hawkins is maybe not as violently so, although she's capable of being that because, like you said, she's pointing the gun. But is she pointing the gun out of fear or out of that? And I and I'm not certain. I I know for for a fact uh, what they're trying to share, but I I really got into it. It is brutal. There's some actions in here. There's one scene that I think Dave was mentioning that is uh, is very hard to watch, but it's also key, very key to the point of this movie obviously, because it ignites what's happening. But I'm kind of surprised they went where they did. It was It's kind of shocking. I ended up liking this movie quite a bit. I, I think this director is qu- incredibly talented. So, Crystal, I mean, you, you're, you're mentioning a lot of problems with the, the script and the character, but did you like the direction at all? I mean, did you? Oh, I, I liked the movie, actually. Okay. I, I liked it. I, I feel like they just, I just wish she wasn't, I just wish they had softened her. I, I just I just think she should have been a softer character. I, maybe it's the actress. Maybe that's my problem. I feel like she came like the faces she made, the way she looked at people. It was like it just she really bothered me. I loved everyone else as far as their acting and the way their characters were portrayed, except for I mean the captain. Oh, God, the Hawkins, like if, the lieutenant. Yeah, if okay. there was any, if there was ever a worse person, I sure have, you know seen him i mean he he's he starts off and you kind of think maybe he's not it as bad as you think and then he just he just proves it every turn he is 
ugh, just heinous, just heinous as a person. And so, and I think that was played very well. I think it was done well. Billy, oh, I, I thought Billy was I can't, fantastic. No, I, I, I cannot, I, I cannot handle Billy. it. That's how much I loved him. Like, look, like for me, all that mattered to me was him and, 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 and his quote unquote uncle. And I don't know. I guess when I watch movies like this, I really, I really just kind of think, oh, you know, precious little white girl, entitled little white girl, that's all I saw. And maybe that's what they wanted. I don't know. But overall, yes, of course, the movie is beautiful. But I have to agree with Dave. It was way too long. Was it? It was way too long. Yes. Yeah. I I didn't feel the length. I didn't feel the length. But I loved how uh, Billy would vanish when when yes. stuff would go down yes. and, then, and, then just, that, and then just pop out behind the tree. You had to be good at that, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Dave, there's gotta be something that perks your ears, right? I mean, there's not terribly much in the world of effects, which we know you love the effects, a couple of spears to the throat and stuff. Did anything kind of grab you by the boo-boo? Yeah, I, I was really just kind of uh, taken by the, the bleakness of it. I mean, it was, it was just so depressing. I, just, <laughs> I don't know how better to describe it. It was depressing. I I came out of that movie just feeling incredibly depressed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know what to make of it. It, 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 it. It's such a a sad story. I don't know why I needed to know about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, okay. you know, this, is, this is why I don't watch these kind of movies usually, because I did cry. I absolutely cried during this movie. And so I'm like, oh, fuck that. <laughs> but again, it, it's so wonderfully put together. I mean, I, you almost have to look at, uh, for me, have to look at it, you know, in two separate ways. As a as a piece of cinematic art, it's exceptional. But as far as a story that I feel has uh, uh, brought something to light I didn't know about, or enlightened my life in some way, or uh, something like that, there, there was nothing there for this. It was just basically in the 1800s, people treated each other like shit. And people were lucky to make it through, you know, it's it's kind of like watching Schindler's List, the same thing, a beautiful movie that's just so damn depressing that, you know, you almost just can't watch it because it's so depressing. Yeah, I would imagine that for those who are into history, especially Australian history or even Irish history for our English history, because, you know, they're all characters in here, that this may have a little more relevance of, you know, place and interest. But you know, uh, yeah, I would imagine that those who are in heavy into drama would love it too. So, yeah, but it was way, way too long. That two hours and fifteen minutes could have been trimmed to ninety, and that would have helped. Wow, that's Dramatic. that's a hefty, that's a hefty trim. That's a hefty yeah, trim. It, but it was a lot of a lot of unneeded stuff in there. A lot, a lot, a lot. You know, so for me, that would have made a big difference in this one. I mean, I'm still going to recommend it, but it's still. Uh, Way too long. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I I want to say that I, there's a point where a family takes our our pair in. Ah, oh, yes. That, that I found incredibly, you know, it was, it was a boohoo moment. I found it incredibly poignant yep. too. And I, for me, that was a highlight. And and Jeff, I want to talk to you about this. I, did this? Did that scene that I'm talking about when, um, you know, they at this point she's afraid that, you know, anybody's going to end up shooting Billy and she's actually protecting Billy at this point because they've reached the city, right? City air quotes. Mm. And they run across this old couple and the old couple is so giving. Well, well wait, wait, wait. The guy is. The wife. Well, the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wife. Yeah. The wife. Got, the wife she's, got the she's got reservations. Awesome. The old dude's like, shut up, bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there is that, but she's you know, keeping she, an eye on him while she's. Yeah. yeah <laughs> she, <laughs> well, no, yeah. when she was sleeping yeah. and just watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. I see. I I can get behind that. I get it. Yeah. Uh, but Jeff, what do, what do you think? Did how important is that scene to this movie? I think it's really important because it gives. Up until that point, I'm trying to think. There's there's the one, and, and I'm going to describe her as as a rich woman in the coach because she has a carriage uh, driver and a footman yes. maybe that allows her that stops and allows her to ride. And then there's this couple, and those are the only two that are really British that are really redeeming characters, I thought. Yeah, I, I think it was a good, it was important to show that uh, a wide range of the settlers, that they weren't all 
total prejudice dicks <laughs> that were <laughs> making uh, taking advantage of the power they had. Well, I, I like, yeah, and I like what it showed. It illustrated something even more of depth to uh, to Claire at that time because you know when he came in, he knew he was to sit on the floor and he got served on the floor. And, right. it, and and then the man, the father, the old man said, "No, come sit with us and eat." And it meant so much to him. Um, but yes. it, you could <laughs> see you could see that it changed her too at that moment. Yeah. And I really loved that moment. But I love that moment for him too. How that's what I see that at, this is this is definitely my favorite scene when he goes to sit at the table and he cries and talks about how this is land. But I mean, when I see him getting served and sitting on the ground and then she throws, the wife throws a utensil on the ground too. Oh. I just, that to me, see, I guess, I guess this is, this is why I feel so strongly toward her is because that is what, that's a real atrocity to be treated as something less than human. And I don't think she realized that. And she was, but she was right. never treated like that either. Okay. But she, so, she was still treated horribly. Yes. Uh, well, she was, well, we don't know how she was treated up until a point really ultimately. Like he, he well, we seemed, know that he did that more than that. He said that he did that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So but that, that's horrible. I, I can't consider, I mean, and, and I know that, that, that this is bad, but let me tell you, all those Aborigines that are treated like that are also raped, but at least she was not treated to uh, not have any clothes and to sit on the floor and eat. And she was treated like a human, at least. Do you see the difference? I mean, he is treated like an animal. All of those people are treated like animals. This is why I guess I just, I just can't with this. I just can't. Cause I'm like, just the bare minimum standards of being treated like a human is just, it's, oh God, just heartbreaking. Right. I just, I really like, really kills me as like, they were, as less than people she wasn't seen as less than a person at least i mean i know what happened to her was horrible it was i mean not downplaying that I'm just saying that holy moly you know mm. Ugh, i hate people humans are the worst all right you know? well there there's a, the humans are the worst uh that's why this is this could very well be a horror film because humans are the worst monsters ever all right that's that's david's depressing moment of the week uh <laughs> let's let's go ahead and wrap this one up because uh i you know there we have not spoiled a number of things <laughs> and there's some sh there yeah it goes down. actually we all didn't right. really give too much away at all i don't think so we, we <laughs> talked about a lot though all right let's give our final thoughts about nightingale uh jeff you're up first so i'm i'm gonna take a minute to just give my viewpoint of claire that from her point of view, the woman that she worked for was really more of a peer. And she was using that power to lord it over her. Now, you could say, yeah, it was nice that she was watching the baby, but she made some crack about her living high and mighty coming to, to you know, take your baby off my hands. And, I, you know, I could see how somebody who's getting raped would take offense at that remark. Um, I also don't think that just because she had grown up as a in the situation that she grew up that that's going to necessarily make her considerate of billy's predicament or status as as uh, aboriginal it just there's you know there's just too many cases of people in the the put upon finding somebody else to put upon and if she didn't have the experience with it i mean here was somebody that if she walked to work by herself she held a knife in her hand and in that kind of opening scene, I think. So she was scared to death to walk to work by herself. Now, I don't know why her husband wasn't taking her, what the deal was there, but that's that's how that started out. So I just, I don't know. I didn't see it. I just saw her as she's a lower class person. She's a prisoner. She hasn't had a family. She's had to scrap for everything she owned. She was in prison. She gets out of prison and they're still lying to her. They're not giving her what was promised to her. And now she hears about what's going on. You know, people are telling her there's a war. She walks out. She finds a, a farm that's uh, the people have been killed in the farm and the sheep are, are dead. And I don't want to go any too much farther. But, but we see similar atrocities to the aboriginal or even worse. So I, 
I just don't think, it, you know, from her point of view, the, it was they were the blacks and they were to be feared. And she was a prejudiced person. And that a big part of the length of the story was her coming across that, you know, coming out of that. I didn't see her as a spoiled brat in any way, just somebody that was colored by the prejudice of the situation and, you know, kind of where she was brought up and where she'd been too. I can't even imagine what it'd been like to be thrown on a ship in Great Britain and sent to Tasmania to be in prison and then getting bought, you know, by a British soldier. I was trying to think too about how this was like, uh, they showed up in Tasmania like around 1803, 1804. Well, that was right after the U S had won their independence. So it's just, it's just weird. The British were just like, they were just all over the place. The sun never sets, I guess. But anyway, I, I saw it as, I just didn't see it as her as a spoiled brat. Um, I thought that that was a possible way that people could have, could be in that situation and in her lifestyle. I just absolutely love this. Is it horrible? Did it make me feel bad? Did it turn my stomach? Uh, did it make me question things? It did. It made me think about, you know, it's not all that different from a lot of the stuff that's happened in our country at different times in history. And I don't know, Dave, people were shitty at that time. They're still shitty. <laughs> <laughs> that's just it's just uh you know so anyway i'm, I'm giving this a uh, 4.75 i i really love this nice and only you know i maybe could have cut 15 minutes but i'm with doc i did i did not feel the length and i don't know what to call the favorite scene i'm not going to take crystals let me think here <laughs> well, I, I think. <laughs> How do you know? Uh, well, well, I know guess I don't know what she's going to pick, but I know one she's talked about that was a favorite. It was it was a favorite. That that was a powerful scene. I'm going to say when. Uh, I don't know. I can only think of horrifying stuff. I should be thinking of more. You know what? I loved his Billy's when he did his spiritual ceremony stuff. I absolutely uh, love that. That oh. stuff was uplifting. I thought. Out of all the stuff in the movie, those were the times when I could kind of get a smile on my face. So I'm, I'll okay. say those. Sun, talking about sun setting. Well, sun rising in this case, right? So that, that, that was yeah, it. yeah. It was all right. Rising. Dave Dreyer, sir. Oh, boy. What are your final thoughts? <laughs> your score, favorite scene for the Nightingale. Uh, nothing too horrible on this. Again, it's a beautifully, technically damn near perfect film, quite frankly. It's just a horrible story. And I don't mean horribly written. Oh. It's just a horrible story. Again, I'm I, I'm not sure what the purpose of it was. I I don't know why we took that journey. So I'm kind of just questioning what the point was, I guess. At least for me, I, I didn't find out anything I didn't already know, and I didn't come out of it. The, the way I went into it when I first met the characters, I came out of it feeling the same way. So uh, it was just kind of two hours and 15 minutes of, okay, there it is. And there it was. But... Uh, Again, certainly not my cup of tea. I even have a hard time calling it a horror film, quite frankly. It, it's definitely a drama through and through. It, it, it's as much of a horror movie as Saving Private Ryan was a horror movie. And again, horrible things happened, but technically not a horror movie. I, I'm going to give it a, a, a two and a half. Oh, wow. Again, it, it's really well done. It really truly is. Uh, as far as favorite scene, I mean, there's really nothing... I mean, every every scene worth talking about is absolutely horrible <laughs> uh, from a standpoint of, of of how people are treating each other other than the the that rape scene and you know what what happens there which I just really don't even want to talk about probably the next scene that upset me almost as much was when they were on the trail and I think they were heading into the town and they come across the people coming out of the town and they have two of the aborigines oh. with them uh, and, uh, wow. and they just slaughter them like they're <sighs> like they're dogs. It, it was, it's just horrible. I don't even, I, it's not, it's not even a favorite scene, but it's a scene that uh, other than that other scene kind of moved me. I mean, at least this time it was, you know, uh, adults <laughs> that were that yeah. were the brunt of it but still just absolutely horrible and it's, it's absolutely not a favorite scene but it was a very well put together scene so i'm gonna go with that one more a memorable scene right? yeah yeah i gotta stick something in here because i said i love this movie it isn't it is it's horrible and it is difficult to watch i guess maybe uh impressed by this movie is a better way to say it okay no, i like that i like yeah that. yeah i knew what you meant i didn't think you oh yeah I didn't, I didn't think, think you, you were enjoyed... like enjoying that. Yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, that's that's some of the hardest stuff to watch. I think. Yeah. Ever really, for anyone. 
Well, I read something too where she uh, actually had like uh, trauma counselors on set, at, you know, as they were filming those scenes. Oh, can you imagine? Oh. Uh, Especially you had to do like multiple takes. Crystal Cleveland, what is your final thoughts, your score favorite scene for the Nightingale? So, yeah. So overall, it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. It's well, I totally agree. It's, a, it's not a horror. It's drama. Absolutely. 1,050 bajillion percent. Do not watch this movie. Do not watch this movie expecting a horror movie. You're going to be so disappointed and you're going to be <laughs> mad at me for saying it was good. And you're going to be and mad at me. And don't watch it to be entertained. It's yes. not an entertaining movie. There is nothing entertaining about this I, at all. It's- I came out and I was so depressed too. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was crying and I was like, I hate, I hated it. But I, I, I mean, for people who are like this, especially historical dramas, I feel like it was, you know, going to be worth it for them. But I, I was surprised. I honestly thought Dave was going to give a higher score because I'm giving three, three point five oh, three and a half. Yeah. Oh wow. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Uh, just because I have a lot of issues with with one character does doesn't make the problem with the movie. And toward the end, I really liked her. Toward the end. Okay. So let's just make that clear. Like her after her, I'm like good with her. But yes, I already said my favorite scene, and, and and basically the favorite scene is when the when the man asks him to come eat at the table, and he even goes and picks his stuff up and sets mm-hmm. it at the table. But it's really oh, his reaction. It's really, to that. it's when he starts crying at the yeah. table, saying, "This is my home. This is our. This is my home." When he says, "This is my home," like they are taking everything away from them. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't. I just can't yeah. with this. The old man even. Gives a, a little touch to the bowl to make sure it's just the right place. You know, like yeah. he's, he's giving it a lot of attention to for the setting. That's, yep. But but at the same time, yeah, it was his land, and how heartbreaking is this whole thing that he yeah. has to rely on the kindness of a stranger to even let him sit at the table? Oh yeah, it's too much. That's just so. Well, I thought I thought it was perfect because just a little kindness goes such a long way. That's why it's so hard to deal with. That's why it's hard, harder. It's like, oh, God. Because there's even, not many kind people in this particular movie. No. They they freaking, they decided to overrun Australia with, with you know. <laughs> I mean, Frist- Billy, Billy isn't really that kind at first. I mean, he's kindly, you know, he, he's actually a little more respectful than Claire is to, you know, to each other. But he still treats her as... An a enemy. person. Well, a you, person? You, but no, well, he does. But he also <laughs> treats her as an enemy. Yeah, you're a white fella, and I'm a black fella. And that's, yeah, because he doesn't like the whites. He, right. he didn't want any. Yeah, so. But he did I mean, agree to help her. I mean, he did. Agree, he, he, he did, and he money. stood, He's and like, he stuck okay. with her. He stuck with her. Yeah. Well, um, by the end, they were friends. Right, right. It was more than that. Like they were, they were outlaws in. Well, I don't think he really liked her until they shared their past, and he too realized how similar. Their lives are well. When he found out why she was doing it, well, even before that, even before that, when, when, yeah, because before he found, because at this point, when they're at the fire, at the camp, at the fire camp, and they just, you know, he just realized how oppressed she was. That it's it was so similar to him. He didn't know about the the uh, you know the killings yet. So that it wasn't until she did the deed, right? All right, it so um, yeah, my my final thoughts. I I liked this movie. I was surprised. I you know could have. I was a little worried there for a, for a hot second. This these kind of films can go uh, south for me personally really quick. But I really got into our characters, their struggles. I under I I, I could get behind the complexity of all the characters, even even the complexities behind the the foul characters because. Uh, there's nothing redeem. Well, yeah, there's nothing really redeeming about the three guys, right? They're, oh, they're kind no. of, um, you hope there was, but then you find out yeah. there's not. I mean, you kind of, the, the two subjective ones, um, you kind of get a hint of some, mm. but they both succumb to, you know, the Lieutenant and his, his, you know his reign that you know it, it washes away any hope of them. So it, it's interesting and complex, right? So this this movie's layered and rich uh, in character development. And uh, is it a horror film? No, not it's not a horror film at all. 
All right. So there is there's this little corner called the Revenge Films. And and this does sit in there. We talked about what is it? What's the film you compared it to? Um, well, I said if Revenge is a horror film, right? Revenge because it's rape and it's revenge and very brutal, right? For I what I spit on your grave, right? Right. So in in that respect, it's it's it kind of is as much as those are, but no, it's it's I, I think for like what Dave is talking, and I would agree that you know horror films are more in the supernatural, monstery kind of side, but here humans are so. It's a. Uh, this is a, this is a hard film to watch. It's very brutal. Some people listening may not really want to watch this movie. There mm-hmm. may be some people. If you're sensitive to some of the topics that we've been discussing at length here, you probably do not want to watch this movie. It does not pull punches, and it it's depressing. Is 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 actually too light a term for how this film can affect you it's uh but it's so well made and so purposefully made i I feel like jennifer kent was out for authenticity you know i'd never questioned when this was supposed to take place right It, it felt very much like i was looking back into that past you know much like uh the vich right and and the lighthouse you know these these directors they have that in common with that authenticity of uh, time and place and the costumes alone. Like, did you look mm. at them? They were so good. Yeah. Yeah. And they also, these two directors, Jennifer Kent in this case are uh, blessed with a, an incredibly strong cast, a really good cast. I'm going to give this movie um, 3.25, 3.5, 3.5. <laughs> um, I himself into it. I, I did. Yeah. I kind of did, actually. My favorite scene, it's really hard to pick one because there's only one really happy scene to pick. And that's the one <laughs> that we, we've talked about with the old man. And, and it's a very important scene. So every other scene that sticks to your head is really horrific. And it's really hard to pick one out. I'm just trying to. So one that I found interesting is early on, the two of them, as they're traveling, uh, they come across one house and they don't have food because an encounter lost their food and uh, Billy wants to go steal some food. And she basically says, you're not doing that. You're not going to go steal food. Later on, they're in the same situation, but now they realize, you know, she realizes why they have Mm -hmm. to do, you know, they got it. They got to do it, which in some cases could be a negative regression of a character, but here it's used in a positive oh, way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I found it fascinating because now they're working together. I mean, okay. They, they're they just surviving and they're surviving much like she did on the streets. And she was trying to be better than that. Right. But in this case, they're forced and it, circumstances are, are entirely different than even then for her. Right. So, but they were working together, and and I found that interesting. And it also had a funny, you know, some funny scenes with him ducking, the, you know, getting away from the gun. Of course, he steals the guy's gunpowder too. That's hilarious. <laughs> because because uh, the owner comes in and, and kind of shakes things yeah. up. And of course, she she you know she's watching. She warns him just in time so he can throw the <laughs> flower up in the air and get it. <laughs> so he gets shot instead. And so yeah, because there's there's some really gruesome scenes in here. Was it the the one guy? Well, he, in many ways, he deserved more than he got. Uh-huh. One thing, another thing I'm going to leave with that I liked is that the effect of that night lasted with her and we get to see the effects of it. You know, she's having these nightmares and they're pretty haunting and horrific as well without being graphic, not the graphic part of it, but the effects of it, right? Uh, you know, he's like, shut the baby up or I will. And when he screams that in the dream. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it has, you know, it's almost more powerful than it was in the original scene because we already know what it means. Right. And she knows what it means. And it, it's so heartbreaking and horrifying. And yeah. So there's things to talk about this film. It's, it's, it's a good conversation maker. That's for sure. Woof. This is a great discussion. I enjoyed the hell out of this. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, you look at all the different viewpoints we came at it with. It was... And and honestly, I'm not that far off from Jeff. I just, I, maybe it's a woman's perspective of her, you know, not being as strong as I felt she should be. That's all, you know? I mean, he's right. She, I mean, maybe to a degree, you know? No, no. We could both be right. 
<laughs> oh, that's true. That, I mean, I, it is like subjective. No, but nobody's you know? wrong here. Nobody's wrong. All right. The <laughs> Nightingale currently playing on Hulu from director Jennifer Kent. So check it out if you dare. Wow. The, the least horror film gets the biggest warning. All right. Uh, that's our show for tonight. The Nightingale, like I said, was on Hulu. And the Red Letter Day is out on Blu-ray and at this moment. Uh, next week, Dave is going to get his moment in the sun. What? Um, we are doing oh, a... Yeah. Yes, we have two films lined up. I'm just going to share them. Normally, we don't. Uh, Animal Among Us, which is a Bigfoot movie. So Dave oh. loves Bigfoot movies. <laughs> and then The Dwelling is a killer bed movie. Now, Dave, I can imagine you love killer bed movies. Too. <laughs> uh, I do. Yes. I, I'm hoping it's set in 1800 Tasmania. Yes. Oh, no. So do not. <laughs> 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 I see the poster says there are monsters under your bed. Now, my wife, if if I'm not home, you know, I used to travel a lot for work. She told me that when she gets into bed, she would like jump the last couple feet oh so that whatever God. was under the bed couldn't get her. <laughs> no, oh, man. Oh, that's, that puts me back to eight year old. Yeah, I remember those days. Um, not that she's eight year old, but I remember that feeling. Which uh, would explain why she doesn't like horror movies, probably. <laughs> but I think we just, uh, Dave's ears perked up with the. Yes, yeah, finally. Like, finally. So we're we're gonna we're gonna yeah we're gonna go from class movies to uh, B grade yum yum so it'll be fun. <laughs> My luck, they're they're probably subtitled and set in a lighthouse. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a big foot in a lighthouse. Mm. A big foot from that, the sea. That doesn't work. That doesn't work for me. That, that is the me. theme for this year, isn't it? Lighthouse. No, not light. I don't want to see another lighthouse movie. All right, that's it. Crystal, Jeff, Dave, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. Oh, of course, Doc. You're welcome. All right. Let's let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.